why sampling is required? Why we will not go for uh, a census? How sampling can help us to meet up the objectives without uh, going for each and individual of your population? Sometimes it is not possible to study all the items of the population. For example, uh, within short period of time and limited resources, we cannot study overall 170 million people of the country. Then if possible, then going to a whole population study is expensive and time consuming. Testing standard newly manufactured products by destroying it, it is not possible for go for census study. For example, you are producing electric bulbs and you have produced a hundred million electric, electric bulb and you would like to know the strength of each bulb by destroying the bulbs. If you destroy each and every element, then your uh, sample will be destroyed and your resource will be demolished. Therefore, uh, you have to determine the strength based on uh, a certain number of uh, samples. If you then sampling provides information to info for the whole population, what I was discussing, the sampling use, uh, sampling uh, facilitate us to, uh, to infer the quality or features of the total population. Then comparative sampling method is economic and quicker. Therefore, if you go for 170 million population uh, study, then it should be time consuming and resource uh, needy. But while you study 500 people based on some selected criteria and uh, collecting data from these 500 people is much more easier, economy as well as uh, limited resource consuming, and then it is comparatively uh, economically easier, economically less costly, and time, from time frame it is quicker. Then assumption in case of sampling. Sample should uh, represent the population. First assumption of a sampling should be that our sample will be selected in such a criteria where this sample will be representative for the overall population. That means uh, the population, if the population have five different criteria of people, then um, our sample should have representative from each different criteria. Uh, if we have uh, six different group of pop, uh, age range, age limit, then our sample should have all the three different group of age limits in the sampling. Then the sample uh, size of sample should be sufficient to represent the population. Because if you, we, you would like to study for 50 million uh, sample, then you select five uh, sample, it is not representative. So to make it representative, there are several uh, equations, several models, several statistical tools to determine the sample size. In this case, the sample uh, should be representative of the total population. It should be according to research problem. This objective of the sampling. The overall objective of the sampling should be uh, to set limit uh, the accuracy in such elements to save energy, to save time, to minimize the cost, to obtain accurate and reliable information about the universe. For example, in the sampling, to set the limit uh, accuracy, then our objective should be uh, the set limit of accuracy, how much we would like to be accurate. For example, uh, if we uh, would like to allow 5% errors in the sample, then uh, we uh, will uh, take five, uh, the standard deviation uh, now, below of the standard deviation 5, uh, 0.5. And if you would like to allow 2% accuracy, then the value of the standard deviation should be 0 0.02. Uh, to save energy, we should uh, select a sample objective. And to save time, we, uh, we go for sampling. To minimize the cost, we go for sampling. It already discussed. And advantage of sampling. Advantage are the volume of data in uh, will be short comparison to the uh, 
overall census. Then when problem is solved urgently, it will uh, conclude, the research will be conclude very quickly. In certain queries, high, highly trained personnel and specialized equipment is required. It becomes impractical to go for big setups. Therefore, based on a sample, small sample conducting research is very easy. Then details information can be obtained for small group uh, and easy to explore expert and uh, small number. It is to control the variables easily. So these are all uh, advantages of sampling rather than go for census. Types of sampling. So if we would like to classify sampling techniques, then we'll find probability sampling and non-probability sampling. What is probability sampling? Probability sampling is the sampling technique where each of the each and every individual of the respondent should have equal opportunity to be selected as sample. It is called probability sampling. And non-probability sampling is the sampling technique where uh, we determine some criteria where uh, other other individuals of the population. And who does not meet our selected criteria will be out of the sample. Therefore, it is called non probability sampling. Then, types of probability sampling. Uh, probability sa sampling could be determined into six specific types. For example, random sampling. If uh, we think we have 100 population, 100 number of population, and we would like to select 25 people from those 100, if we can go for random selection where each and every individual have equal chance to be selected as a sample. That is called random sampling. And systematic sampling is a sampling technique where we can select uh, every fifth or every fourth individual from that hundred sample. If we determine that uh, every fourth individual will be selected, then we'll find finally 25 sample but it will uh, exclude others, but it, will, it is according to a systematic procedures. The stratified sampling. Stratified sampling is the sampling technique where we divide the total uh, population into several strata. And from each strata, we select some sample randomly. Then this is uh, also could be termed as double stage sampling also. Uh, because in this stage, the first stage is stratifying and dividing the strata and then selecting randomly from each of the strata, each of the groups. So it is a double stage sampling as well. That's cluster sampling. If we divide our respondent into different cluster, different groups, then the sampling could be uh, termed as cluster sampling. Then multi-stage sa sampling. The stratified sampling also a multi-stage sampling. Multi uh, otherwise, we can have some multi-stage sampling. For example, uh, at first we select uh, the age group uh, from this hundred population. For example, we can select 15 to 25, then 25 to 40, then 40 to uh, 55. Uh, these uh, three three different groups. And from each group, we can uh, uh, again select 50% uh, women, 50% men. Men. Then from the women, we can select the unmarried women and married women. Uh, from the men, we can select unmarried men. Uh, we can select married men. So therefore, it is called multi-stage sampling. The area sampling. In some uh, some researches, we select area or location-wise. For example, if, uh, for example, if we go for a nationwide study in Bangladesh, we can go for 64 district wise. And from each district, we can select somebody from metropolitan area, somebody from village area. And from each uh, district, we can select divisional cities, uh, somebody from divisional uh, area, somebody from suburban area, somebody from urban area. So these types of area uh, based selection process could be termed as area sampling. Types of non-probability sampling. The non-probability sampling are three types. Purpose sampling. If we select our sampling,